So last week I made my wife the binders for her Mandalorian costume. We've got a couple of local cons coming up and a lot of the group is talking about doing bounty hunts and you can't do bounty hunts unless you've got some way to capture your target. So she wants some binders, I made her some binders. Next logical progression, to make something to hold the binders in. Uh, if all of my projects went together this easily, I'd get a lot more accomplished. Uh, fairly simple snap in the back to hold it on the belt. Um, only real big shortcoming is, like I mentioned in the video a little later on, is that my belt is two and a half inches and hers is two, so it doesn't fit on my belt. I'll have to make another one eventually anyway, so and there we have it. If it's down, instead of a buckle, I just have a Kydex hanger on there and drop them in there like that, and they hold in pretty well. So, anyways, enjoy the video and have a great week. I started out with a paper pattern that was roughly what I wanted it to look like. Uh, used a wooden buck that I had created to get the general lengths. Added about an extra 3 eighths of an inch to give me a little bit of room to stitch to. And then cut the pattern to size. I then set the bindings on a piece of paper and gave myself an extra little bit of room. Again, I'm going to use all outside stitching on this. Uh, so I used the bindings to get the general dimension for the flat piece that I'm going to use, uh, drew some dimensions, squared up the piece of paper, and then cut this piece out to size, and this is going to be the pattern for the part that's actually going to go against my leg. I overlaid the top pattern onto the bottom pattern so that I could get the right shape, and then gave myself an extra quarter of an inch for the stitch line. Um, once I had that all done, I squared up the pattern and cut the bottom pattern out. I then overlaid the pattern onto the backside of a piece of leather that I had left over from another project and traced out the pattern. Uh, once I had the pattern traced out, I cut it out with a pair of scissors. This is fairly lightweight stuff. I'm thinking it's like 3, 4, maybe 4, 5. Um, then I got a piece of heavier, uh, 6, 7, 7, 8, somewhere around in there, and got the back piece. And like I said, this is the flat piece that actually is going to attach to the belt. I set the binders on the back piece, then folded each one of the legs down and traced a line where the leather went and then cut out that line. Um, I'm going to glue these together and then they'll get punched and stitched. Held everything together the best I could and marked the lines on the bottom part so I knew where to I, where I needed to and where I needed not to glue when I put the contact cement on. Uh, then I gave both sides a pretty good coat of contact cement, let it dry for a minute or so, and then stuck it together. I feel like now would be a good time to mention that normally I would advise roughing up the leather a little bit in the area you're going to apply the contact cement, but I didn't do it this time, and well, hopefully it'll hold, but it's stitched together, so. Once everything was where it was supposed to be and properly aligned, I punched a whole bunch of holes uh, using the whole punch, stitching punch that I've got, and then hand sewed the pieces together. I then scavenged a couple of leather pieces and made two six-inch straps uh, that I'm going to fit with snaps so that they can come off the belt fairly easily off and on. Uh, I didn't want to have to bother with trying to take the belt off to get the things on. Uh, unfortunately, here's where I got a little short-sighted. Uh, my wife's belt is two inches and mine is two and a half, and I just didn't leave enough room for my belt, so if I want to put this on, that's just too bad. Uh, then punched a couple of holes, and using a combination of snaps and rivets, I didn't want the shiny little ugly pieces showing through the front side. I wanted the nice, clean black rivets, so 
uh, stuff rivets inside the snaps, the Line 24 snaps, so that the front side, all you can see is the little black rivet, and the back side is essentially the head countersunk into the snap. Uh, but it works! I took the thickest piece of Kydex that I had laying around and cut out a one-inch section of the Kydex that was four inches long. I'm um, going to heat mold this around a piece of angle iron so that it is what holds the binder onto the belt at the top piece. And that way I don't have to fuss with a snap or strap or anything. Uh, once I had the line, I tried to cut this with a uh, razor knife and it just didn't work. Uh, I found tin snips the best thing for cutting the Kydex. Uh, they work really, really well and it was so much easier to do. Mark some lines where the angle on the little bracket was going to be. Uh, it'll make more sense here in a minute when you watch me mold it. Uh, then took it outside with a heat gun and warmed it up and bent it so that it was two angles. Uh, one will be attached to the holster and the other will hold the binders in place. I drilled a couple of holes into the Kydex thing, transferred that to the backside of the, hol the holster pouch, uh, made sure everything was square and straight, using the center as best possible, uh, then transferred those holes to the, the back piece of leather, and then went to punch them out. And now i got to find my hand punches. Aha! I found them, punched them out, and then riveted that piece in place. A good coat of Phoebe's black dye and then a good rub down with carnauba cream will give these pretty much the same texture and color uh, minus a little bit of age and weathering that our current kits have. Uh, this was actually a fairly quick and easy project because we're actually thinking about changing kit color and I didn't want to get into the wet molding and then have to change it because wet molding is actually a little bit more of a process. But the next holster I make will be wet molded so watch out for that video. Uh, thanks for watching and have a great day.